to Christianity Out Loud, and my name is Steve. And I nearly did that backwards, which would have been a very good start. I nearly said, welcome to Steve, and my name is Christianity Out Loud. Would have been a good start. Anyway, welcome to, welcome to the channel, welcome to the community. Uh, if you're new here, uh, first time viewing, uh, there's a bit of a catalogue you can go back and have a look at. Uh, the first one in particular, although forgive my uh, first time talking to myself on camera. It's uh, a little bit odd to start with, but um, you do get used to it. Uh, anyway, I digress. So this channel, this community is just, it's, it's uh, aiming to be a place where uh, Christianity is able to be discussed. Uh, where current events, topics, cultural, social, political, you name it, uh, things are able to be looked at through the lens of uh, Christianity. Um, I will try and be uh, as honest as possible. Uh, my biases um, fairly well lie within uh, the Christian worldview, uh, but within that I at least try and present accurate representations of scripture and how I think uh, Christians should respond uh, to anything, really. So if you, uh, if you like the idea of that, like the sound of that, hey, uh, why, not, uh, why not subscribe? Um, YouTube or Rumble or Locals, if you're new on Locals uh, to that community, um, comment. Make comments, comment about what I'm talking about. Feel free to agree with me, disagree with me. I don't mind either way. Uh, it's interesting on YouTube, you get the option of holding comments that may be considered uh, something, I forget the wording, uh, just ignore, I've just, anybody can comment, anybody. Doesn't worry me, so. Anyway, that's what the uh, channel is about. That's what we're trying to do here. So, thanks for tuning in. If it's YouTube or Rumble or Locals, uh, thank you very much. Greatly appreciate you uh, watching and listening. Uh, I'm not very happy at the moment. Um, seems a little bit odd, perhaps, coming into this time of year. Uh, but I get a little bit cynical about Christmas time, but that's a message for another night, day, another time. Uh, I'm not real happy at the moment. Uh, people who know me would just say that's, that's a, just a normal state of being, uh, Steve. That's his normal state of existence. He's not happy about something. Um, and that may or may not be true, but I will also tell you as a side note that I have a problem with authority, and as a response to that, I would say no, I have a problem with arbitrary authority, not good authority. Good authority, perfectly fine. Uh, anyway, I digress and am rambling or monologuing to quote um, uh, the first Incredibles film. We had a tweet today, yesterday, 13th, what's the date, 14th, so this was yesterday, from our Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk, and I quote, it's just on my screen over there, which is why I'm looking that way, a big thank you to the way Queenslanders have handled this pandemic, it's been nearly two years, tragically we've lost seven lives. Pause for a minute. It has been nearly two years. And yes, it is tragic that we have lost seven lives to COVID. Um, but the way that's phrased is as if nobody else died of anything else. See how that's phrased there. I continue. But the results have been really unpre unprecedented compared to the rest of the world. No. Carrying on. 
our businesses have been able to function. Except when you lock them down. Our children have gone to school. Except when you made them do it remotely. And we've fought back and contained more than 50 separate outbreaks. The credit here belongs to every single Queenslander, so thank you, thank you, thank you. I haven't done anything. I'll take the thanks, but I haven't done anything. Carrying on. This is going to be a very, very special time of the year. And as a government, we've been very conscious of how important this is to reunite families. Before I continue. As a government, they are conscious of how important this time is for families. Is it the only time where families matter? Families haven't mattered for the past two years. I mean, I've mentioned it before, that my parents live just over the border in New South Wales, double vaccinated, fully vaxxed, to go get vaxxed and it'll be back life as normal. That was the catch cry to start with. They went and did it. Still weren't allowed into Queensland because, well, your guess is as good as mine. See, this playing on emotions has been something that has been done throughout this pandemic. And it is playing on fear. It has been playing on fear. Since the date was announced that Queensland, that the government was going to talking like it was going to happen arbitrarily, the borders are going to come down. No. That the government announced that they would open up the border again. <clears throat> They've been at people saying COVID is coming. COVID is coming. Like it we're about to enter some sort of battlefront in a physical war. That's the level of emotion that's being present, pardon me, presented. Spirit of fear. Carrying on to all the Queensland health employees and to every Queenslander who's gone and got vaccinated. I really do appreciate you doing this. You mandated it. They had no choice. You appreciate that they have followed your chief health officer's directive, otherwise they lose their job at this special time of year for families. Carrying on. Queensland's cautious approach has kept Queensland safe. No, it's kept us isolated, it's prevented people from coming in, it's kept families separated, and it has presented, prevented rather Queensland residents People who live here, pay taxes here, work here, own real estate here, have family here, are part of communities here. It has prevented them from coming back into the state that they live in. We will live with COVID, but on our terms, no on your terms. We must continue to protect the freedoms Queensland has enjoyed throughout the pandemic. And the best way to do that is to continue getting vaccinated. We will continue to protect the freedoms. You mean the freedom to freely travel between states as is written in the Constitution of Australia? You mean that freedom? See, I realise that governments or politicians across uh, numerous countries, actually, uh, are seeming to look upon you know, documents that were part of the founding of those countries as, well, when it suits them, they like it. When it doesn't, 
Well, it's outdated. So we can, do we really need this? I mean, we can just implement something today that overrides the founding document of the country. You know, I've had conversations like that with people who were struggling to work it out. Why, why, why aren't people allowed to travel across the border? Well, the government has said so. But the Constitution says that we should have free travel. Yes, it does. So the Queensland government and Western Australian governments and all sorts of governments are just ignoring the Constitution. Yes, they are. But they can't do that. Apparently they can. Apparently they can. Apparently also, the Queensland government can hold to the fact that it's your choice to get an abortion, your body, your choice. Don't worry about the baby, it's your body, your choice. Uh, you can choose if you want to end your life through voluntary euthanasia laws. And there's a really a degree of finality to euthanasia. There's, there's no coming back from that decision. But it's not your choice if you want to go get a vaccine. So it's only your body, your choice, when it's convenient. So yes, we must continue to protect the freedoms Queensland has enjoyed throughout the pandemic, and the best way to do that is to continue getting vaccinated. Okay. Now, back to the seven lives lost for a moment. Yes, it is tragic that those people died, so don't think that I am for a minute trivialising the fact that seven people lost their lives. I had this conversation with someone, oh, it was a while ago now, about their, or their perspective was why I don't deserve to die from COVID. And I went, okay, but nobody deserves to die from anything like i don't how is that how is that a legitimate so what are we are what are we what are we arguing here i mean a, 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 a friend of mine's wife passed away from brain cancer i'm, I'm not sure that, that family deserved that uh one of my wife's very good friends uh, knew her from um, high school, passed away of cardiac arrest. I'm, I'm not sure she, her family, or my wife deserved that. So, what are we, what are we saying here? I Man, I'm happy to have that discussion, but I need, I need to know what I'm. What are we, what are we talking about here? I mean, seven people passed away in Queensland because of COVID. That's the statistic. Bottom line, you can go find it anywhere. Okay? But what were the leading causes of death in 2020? I've been over this before. I mention it again. Top one was, I can't pronounce the first word, but it's heart disease. Killed, uh, one, th sorry, 16,597 people died of heart disease. Dementia. Now, any, uh, many people know someone or know of someone who has suffered, suffering, died from, or looked after someone with dementia. It is a horrible, horrible illness. 14,575 people in 2020. Uh, cerebrovascular disease. Now we jump down to under 10,000 people. So 9,400. Uh, malignant neoplasm of trachea, bronchus, and lung. Could mean anything. Um, that's just shy of 8,500. Chronic lower respiratory, just over 7,000. Uh, malignant neoplasm of colon, signal, and rectum, and anus. Not sure what that means. Um, sounds interesting. Um, 
just shy of five and a half thousand people. Diabetes, just over five thousand. I can go on. Accidental falls, there's a good one. Not a good one, but there's an interesting one. 3,395 people died of accidental falls, 2020. Intentional self-harm. It's the one that uh, concerns me a lot more. Uh, 3,139 people in 2020. To get to COVID, you've got to go down, all the way down, to number 38, where not 1,000 people, in fact, not even 900 people, it's 898. I'll put this link below, above, beside, somewhere. I'll put this link again, somewhere. I've mentioned these statistics and these numbers before. Why am I doing it now? Again, why am I doing it now? Well, again, the premise has been government is here to protect your health. That is what the government is mandating these vaccines for. You are now probably under some form of vaccine mandate for your employment. Because why? Because the government cares for your health. That's why. Now, I find it a little bit hard to believe that the government cares for your health when 3,395 people die of accidental falls. Not only that, who is actually responsible for your health? I'll give you a minute to think about that, and I'll ask you again. Who is responsible? Not your safety. Don't conflate the two. Who is responsible for your health? I'll give you a hint. It's you. See, if the government cared for your health, think about it. Why aren't they out at South Bank, for those of you living in Queensland or Brisbane? South Bank is, um, how would you describe it? Uh, like a, a loosely a water park I'll, I'll call it that not 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 a completely accurate definition but for the sake of it loosely a water park um, why has the government not got uh, representatives or police or you name them security any sort of any sort of a regulatory uh, group of people out enforcing the use of sunscreen. We had them out enforcing the use of masks earlier in the year, despite the, uh, shall we say, conflicting, at best, uh, evidence as to whether they actually were worked efficiently or not. You wanted to wear one? Wear one. Go for your life. I'm not telling anybody to do anything. But if we've got police, in this instance, out enforcing that people who are exercising, walking on their own, near nobody, in fresh air, or driving around in your car by yourself, if the police are pulling people over and enforcing that they are enforcing a mask mandate, why is there not a sunscreen mandate for somewhere like South Bank? Or the beach? Or construction? People are working outside? Why, if the government is concerned for your health, 
your particular, but the health of personal health. Uh, why is the government not out, or police in this instance say, why are they not out um, taking cigarettes out of people's mouths and enforcing nicotine patch mandates? And we all know what smoking does. We all know the damage that smoking does. We all know. We've known for 50 years. There's been lawsuits against tobacco companies. It's, we know. We know. The medical evidence is in. It is unequivocal, undebatable. People still do it. Why? Choice. Why, if the government cares so much for people's personal health, are they not uh, police out breathalyzing people at all manner of licensed venues to ensure that binge drinking is not occurring? Yes, I hear you. There are laws in place for venues that they are not to serve intoxicated patrons. I get that, okay, but that is a law that is applied to the venue, not the individual. If the individual wants to go home, say, and continue drinking, continue binge drinking, drinking another three bottles of whiskey or scotch or whatever they're preferred alcohol is, then they're entitled to do that. But if the government cares about individual health, personal health, why are police not preventing that? You know, if the government cared for personal health, they would no doubt be aware that someone was 3.5 times more likely to die of a self-inflicted, to die of self-infliction, if I can phrase it like that, to die of suicide, might be around the bush, 3.5 times more likely to die of suicide than of COVID. Is that not concerning? Am I the only one who is concerned by that? Am I the only one looking at the new Chief Health Officer in Queensland saying everybody must go get vaccinated, we care for people's personal health, the Omicron, whatever it's called, variant is on its way. And then saying it's a mild cold. I mean, we are living under a new normal. How much of it is actually normal? Maintain physical distance. Note, it's not called social distancing anymore. I wonder why that changed. Wear a mask when you're required to. That's not normal. Not for, I'll say, Western countries. Okay? I mean, no disrespect to First World Asian countries, but US, England, a lot of European countries, Australia, New Zealand. It's not normal to wear a face mask. Okay? Somewhere like Japan, if you're sick, you wear a mask. If we want to take that up, happy days. Shows respect for your fellow human. Don't cough and splutter on, on them. But if all you have is a cold, it really arguably shouldn't prevent you from still being somewhat functional at your work, you wear a mask. You're sick, you wear a mask. That's that's what it's like. That's that's the social etiquette, I guess you'd call it. 
wear a mask when you're required to. That's not normal. It's not normal for healthy people to wear masks. It's not normal for a 12 year old child to be wearing a mask. Maintain good hygiene. I don't know why that is part of a new normal, but anyway, stay home when sick. Again, yes. Check in Queensland app for effective contact tracing. That is not normal. Get vaccinated. It's not normal for vaccines to be mandated in order for people to be gainfully employed. Which brings me to really why I was not happy. From my church, it shall remain nameless online, but I'm sure they were not the only ones. And yes, I will speak to somebody about my concerns regarding this. No, it is not enough for me to leave. I'm not that petty. But, great news. The Queensland Government has finally updated the public health and social measures linked to vaccination status. Status. I will say that again properly. The Queensland Government has finally updated the public health and social measures linked to vaccination status. Got it right that time. Places of worship will not be affected. We will continue forward. Open to all people carrying on. Now, I'm sure to many people, they read that and went, Yay, wonderful news. We can, keep, we, we can go to church. I go, really? You were actually going to let the government dictate who can and can't walk through your doors? if that decision had been made? Because if that's the case, you are bowing to a different God. You are bowing to the God of government. It, am I the only one that is concerned the churches are going, yay, government's told us we can have everyone. Am I the only one concerned by that? I would hope I'm not the only one concerned by that. If that had come down the opposite way, if the government had said, well, people must present the vac uh, vaccination status in order to go to church, every good church should have turned around and gone no nah, we don't answer to you so instead we're celebrating the fact that the government has allowed everybody to go to church We need Christians, Christians, we need to return to the countercultural role in society. We have to. It's Christmas time. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 10. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. All. Think about it. What was a shepherd in those days? In that time, early AD, CE, common era or Christ's era, as I shall now refer to it, 
thank you to that smart person who, who came up with that. BCE, oh, that's before Christ's era. CE, Christ's era. I digress. What were shepherds? Shepherds were not seen as, as, as upstanding citizens. They were dirty. They were outcasts. The angel appeared to them. Christ was revealed to them. It's for all. For all. 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 Second Timothy chapter 1 verses 6 to 7. For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit not of fear but of power and love and self-control. What are you afraid of? If you are afraid, what are you afraid of? If you're a Christian, you know where you're going. What are we afraid of? As I mentioned last week, uh, this will be the last weekly word for 2021. I'm away for the next few weeks, spending some time with friends and family, enjoying the real reason for the season, uh, celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. Uh, if you are still looking for a gift, uh, may I suggest uh, Bread of Life, the Simple Gospel. Uh, you never know who might need a word like that during times like these. So I'll post a link to that below as well. So, until 2022, stay safe, be good, and God bless.